This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. This episode of Know How is brought to you by Drobo, a family of safe and expandable yet simple to use storage arrays. Drobos are designed to protect your important data forever. Visit drobo.com slash twit and use the code twit100 to save $100 off a Drobo Mini, Drobo 4 Bay, or Drobo 5M. And by the Ring Video Doorbell. With Ring, you can see and talk to anyone at your door from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. It's like caller ID for your house. Right now, get free expedited FedEx shipping when you go to ring.com slash knowhow. On a New Year's edition of Know How, putting some groove into your pie, open and closed source media players, and your questions are answers. It's the Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I'm Father Robert Ballasare. And I'm Brian Burnett. And you may notice that today is not Thursday. No, it's not. And that's because that's we weird. moved to the new schedule. This is the new know-how. New, this the is new, the new how. The new how new know of, of new the, New of Year's. 2016. 2016. Yeah. Uh, in all seriousness, if you missed it, last year we announced that uh, we're moving to two know-hows a week. We knew that you folks out there like your DIY and that's maker right. knowledge. So we've decided to split it. Now, as we explained, mm -hmm. there, there's going to be slightly different flavor for every show. And Thursday, new hats. And, and new hats, by the right. way. Oh, yeah, actually, let's, let's start with these Should hats. Should we do the hats first? These are super fashionable hats. I got to right. say, everyone, every, all the important people of oh. the know-how crew got these yes. chapeaux, right? Yes. Chapeau. Chapeau. So you got a chapeau. I, yes. I got a chapeau. Alex, you got a chapeau, correct? Right. Right? You, right? Wait, wait. Oh. 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 oh, did they not get oh. you one? Well, that one's pretty good, too. Wow. That's an all right one. I feel, oh, uh, you God. know, I, we may have to work on that. Maybe, I mean, I, I could give you the bag mine came in. These are, yeah, right? You can smell <laughs> the essence out of the bag. <laughs> they have these little special pins on them and everything. Like, I'm well, going to cherish this for I, a long I, time. I guess Alex just wasn't chapeau to have one. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> okay. All right. But seriously, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing more of the hardcore builds on Thursday. So yeah. if you like the makery side, that includes drones or any of the like the serious programming, that's going to end up more on Thursday. I'm not saying it's not going to end up on the Monday episode. No. But it, we, we're going to try to keep two styles of know-how. On, on Mondays... We're going to be doing a lot more software tips. We're going to be do doing a lot more sort of how-to general folk who want to figure out how to make things work. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think it's going to work out well because we don't want to overwhelm the knowledge hole, you know, all in one go. We're just going to spread it out a little bit now. Right. Uh, I will say this. We're doing our part. You ask for another episode of Know How, we're going to give it to you. We do have the green light to increase. So if Ooh. the numbers go up even more than <laughs> oh. they have already been going... <laughs> We could potentially add a third know-how. Go so. You know. So that's incentive for uh, people out there to tell their friends, family, yes, and uh, whoever else they get, want. Get the word out about know-how, and who knows? Maybe we'll have like know-how just for for tea, like tea parties. A tea party <laughs> know-how. I would with, I would with our imaginary friends and crumpets. Brian, all my friends are imaginary. <laughs> yeah, well, that that's definitely true. That's but so do sad. they have do they have show? Chapeaux? Chapeaux? Chapeaux. 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 That's what know. they are. Yeah, yeah. Well, all all right. the cool friends do. Yeah, exactly. Actually, yes, we should probably do the first segment with our uh, elite badged headgear. <laughs> now, before we jump into the main project, uh, and right. today we wanted to do, it's a little bit of a holdover from last year when we were showing you multiple monitor madness. Mm -hmm. We had people who wanted to know about media centers because yes. there are some very nice media centers out there, some of which are also very good at doing like airplay or a secondary monitor. Right, and I have a feeling that a few people might have gotten these things as a gift yes. you know, over the holidays. Yes, so if you got an Apple TV, if you got a Chromecast, or if you're one of these geeks like us who likes making your own stuff and maybe you're trying the Raz Pi Media Center, we're gonna be giving you some of the basic tips you need to get them up and running and then a couple of uh, intermediate to advanced techniques to get the most out of your gift, yeah? Yep, yeah, that's Let's what do we that. do. But before we do that, you know you know what I want to do? What's that? I want to get my groove on. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, can we do that on this show? Yes, we can. Oh. Specifically, 
I want to get my groove pie on. You know that we are big fans of these. These are the raspberry pies, right? Oh, look at these little guys. These are cute. Now, this is the, this is, uh, the first one, right? That was the very, first, the very first raspberry pie that yeah. I bought. Now, this is the new hotness. That's, That's the right. version two that has four times as much memory. It's six times as much processing power. It's the right. one that we're building most of our gear off right now. It's got an extra couple of USB ports. Yeah, very, very cool. But there is one thing, and that is when people are starting to build Rasp Pi, they're realizing it's more than just a place to run a Linux distro. That's nice, right. but it's really an extending the functionality that you get the most out of the Pi. Yeah, using the Raspberry Pi as like a little computer yeah. with the, the Linux distro is fine. It's a it's great okay. way to like yeah. get into it's it. Cool. But I like it. You definitely want to have a specific project to play yeah. with. Yeah. Uh, we have been showing projects here. We, we've been showing people how to use the GPIO header in order to get displays out or to get functions out, get sensors co connected to the Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. But there's a much easier way to do it, and it's called the Groove Pi. The Groove Pi. Yeah, we've got, a, we've got a website here that we're going to be able to show you. This is a way to build your own smart device on top of a Raspberry Pi. Uh, there, it starts with a shield. That's that thing right on top of the Raspberry Pi that connects to the GPIO header of a Raspberry Pi, and it gives you I squared C connections for up to 15 different sensors slash devices. Ooh. Yeah, now that board runs $29.99, and, and literally all it is is it's an interface that will turn the serial communications on the Raspi into I squared C, which is a communications bus that a lot of different devices use. And then you're going to be making music with this? No, I'm going to be making something much, much better. I can make <laughs> Internet of Things things. Wow. Yeah, check this out. Go to that page with all the sensors, Alex. <laughs> there are over 100 sensors. These Whoa. all speak I squared C. And the wonderful thing about this is they're using the same wire. It's using the same bus. So you don't have to worry about how do you wire this particular sensor. Nice. Each one of these takes the same cable. It's an I squared C, uh, squared C cable, plugs into the Groove Pi shield, and then it gives you access to everything there. Now, buttons, LEDs, switches, potentiometers, relays, buzzers, temperature sensors, bar barometric pressure sensors, sound sensors, magnetic compass, vibration sensors, uh, accelerometers, even like a gas sensor or GPS and NFC, that's all contained there. That is cool. Yeah, and, and really, it's it's what what what's what's your, the limit on your imagination? Yeah, really. I uh, maybe you could do an a collision avoidance system. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's the other thing I wanted to mention, which is I squared C is not limited to the Raspi. In fact, I've used it quite a bit on my Arduino projects. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just a nice, neat way to plug in a bunch of sensors. And here's the thing. There, there's going to be people out there who are freaking out. They're like, wait a minute, who cares if I can plug in a sensor if I can't make it work True. with, with whatever it is? Right, or it's uh, really hard to get it to work. It's totally, totally not. And this is one of the things that we'll be showing off in a build segment in the very near future. On an Arduino, it's getting a library. Just getting an I2C library, and they literally write all the functions for you, and then they give you the instructions. Pass this number, and you'll get these numbers. <laughs> uh, and uh, for, for the Raspberry Pi, it's the same thing. It's a pseudo apt get. It downloads the package, and you're ready to go. Nice. Yeah. That's a little baby step. That's good. Super, super little baby step. And I, I, I do want you to support GroovePi. I want you to support the, the, uh, the, the organizations that are creating these devices, because if you don't support them, they don't make them anymore. Right. However, we won't have these things that we love to play with. Yes, I, I will say this though. Um, if you were to go onto eBay right now, mm -hmm. you could find devices that are very close to this quality for one fourth the price. Oh, I see what you're saying. Knockoffs. Knockoffs. Yeah. And I, I, I'm not going to make any moral judgments. I do prefer to buy my stuff from. The, the places that I enjoy. That, that's yeah. just a personal preference. But I know. want to support the things that you love. I want to support, but that's because I can't. I do have a little extra cash. There are right. going to be builders out there who, if you're operating on a bare budget, no judgment here. Just know that a lot of those, those knockoffs, mm -hmm. there's a reason why they're knockoffs. Quality control, probably. Quality control. You will notice that as you buy cheaper, you're going to get more quality issues. And especially right. if it's from some unnamed place in China, there's no return policy. Yeah, so if you order a Sardino, it may not be the same product you thought an Arduino was going to be. Actually, I have, I have seen a Sardino. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's very, very well, true. Well, I love my Sardinos and my Bolexes. I wear them with my... Oaky oh. sunglasses. O o oak, oak knee. Oak knee. Oak yeah, oak, oak knee. knee. <laughs> uh, okay, folks, we're going to stop talking about knockoffs. We're going to be getting right into the entertainment segment yes. of this brand new New Year's edition 
of know-how. But before we do that, let's start off the new year right by thanking a brand new sponsor to know-how. That's lucky us, right? Now, it, the funny thing is they're brand new, but they're totally not brand new. No, I've heard of Drobo. Drobo, yeah. Now, Drobo has been with Twit for a long, long time. In fact, they were with us like at the beginning, Right. and now they're back. Uh, if you don't know what a Drobo is, I, I, I don't blame you, because a lot of people focus on, well, the Western Digital or Seagate external hard drive mm -hmm. or you know, the, the Synology NAS. Drobo is a different way to think about storage. In fact, hmm. it's, it's a very focused way to think about storage. What exactly do you need? What exactly does the mission require? And how much speed are you uh, needing to pay for? Now, we know that data is essential to our lives. As makers, as builders, you know, if you don't have data, you have nothing. Uh, Drobo understands that, and they've created the safest, the simplest, and the most expandable solution for all your storage needs. They offer you a family of external storage arrays and that allow you to either add your own drives, expand them, make them redundant as necessary. You want to choose one drive to keep in spare? That's fine. You want to choose two? They could do that too. But, but imagine the speed you get with this. We're not talking about a gigabit or, or, or you know, a little bit more than that. We're talking about five gigabit. We're talking about six gigabit if you're using Thunderbolt. Oh, they've got two products that they, they were hoping I would talk about. And I, I actually really like this. The Drobo 5N. It's a perfect network attached storage device. It could be a media server, a file server, or a backup solution. It's really easy to use. You just plug it into your switch or your router and you're ready to go. We, we know that. That's, that was, that's a network attached storage box. Their apps let you backup data to two different cloud service providers, or you could sync via BitTorrent Sync. It also works well as a Plex server uh, for, say, the new Apple TV. Now, the ones that I'm really, really excited by are the direct attached storage boxes, the Drobo Mini and the Drobo 5D. The Mini is lightweight and portable. It's just over two pounds. Four drive bays, up to eight terabytes of storage, and it's designed so you can carry it with you. Same thing with the 5D. The 5D is a lightweight desktop unit with space for five three and a half inch drives with a maximum capacity of 64 terabytes. Imagine that, Brian. Uh, both have optional MSATA SSD acceleration bays. Th this is a great idea. You put in an SSD and you get that much more space. It's just like caching for your hard drive, for the most used files. When you're pulling from the SSD, it just screams. I mean, we've played with SSDs on uh, NoHelp. Uh, once Brian. you go SSD, you don't go back. You don't go back. And once you go with a hybrid approach, you're never going to want to go back. Now, oh, Drobos are reliable. They are expandable. They're simple and they're fast. They're basically everything you want out of a storage array, especially if you're going to direct attach them. Folks, if you want to look at a new way of considering your storage, if you want to make it mission specific, I suggest you check out Drobo. Now, right now, you can visit drobo.com slash twit. That's drobo.com slash twit to learn more and to check out their complete line of products. And when you use the code TWIT100, you'll save $100 off the purchase of a Drobo Mini, a Drobo 4Bay, or a Drobo 5N. F why not try the device that Leo Laporte carries with him that moves his data back and forth between his home and his office? That's drobo.com slash twit, drobo.com slash twit, and use the code TWIT100. And we thank Drobo for their support of know-how. Thanks, Drobo. Thank you, Drobo. Okay, should we should we take off the? the uh, pose? Yeah, it's getting a little hot underneath little hot, yeah. the under there. You know but what? But they're special, like so they, we're gonna set them aside. They're just so well made. They really yeah. are. You know, so much nicer than a turkey on my head. <laughs> oh, oh, it, Look, oh, who oh, turned oh, down the <laughs> oh, right, the director is. Uh, oh, he's not pleased, so oh, he's gonna knock stuff off what? the set. Oh, see that was. Where slick. did the? That where was, did our showbos go? Oh. Our showmos. Showbo, Showbo. Next to the Drobo. Huh. Yeah. Well, he didn't even put the turkey back here for Go us. Figure. He just walked off with those. Oh, Brian, uh, I'm actually kind of excited by this because, as you mentioned, there are people out there who have received Christmas gifts. Yeah. Uh, or holiday gifts, whatever they want to call it. Uh, and, and some of them are going to have received Apple TVs mm -hmm. or Chromecasts. Right. And they'll think about Depending using Depending on that, which camp you're in. On what camp. But, yeah. but most of them are going to look at it as just a media service, but it's, it's actually so much more. Yes. And uh, you know what? Why don't we just take a look at this video? So as far as media devices go, the first one I want to talk about is the Google Chromecast, which is by far my favorite gadget of 2015 and is the most used device in my house. It comes in at $35, and it's best used if you have an Android or even an iOS phone, which allows you to cast from your phone, basically using your phone as a remote. Uh, you have access to all the apps that would normally be on your phone, say Netflix, Hulu, etc. 
Uh, and one of the other benefits of the Google Chromecast, super simple to set up. You can cast tabs from your laptop, which is nice when you are just trying to show a website or some other video that doesn't have an app. Uh, also, you can do mirroring from your phone, uh, show pictures, things like that. So the Chromecast is a good option for that. They also have a audio Chromecast if you are a person who has a nice sound system and you just want to send music from your phone to that system. Uh, definitely a cool option for that. Now, say if you are an Apple person, the device you would want to look at is the Apple TV. It is a little bit more expensive, coming in at $149.99, but it does have the iTunes App Store. So you've got all the apps that you would have for iOS. Uh, you can rent and buy movies. It also comes with a remote that allows voice search. Uh, so if you're somebody that wants a remote, this is a good option. And the remote allows you to play games that are on the App Store. Whether or not it's a good remote for playing games, that's to be said for the game, but uh, it, you can use it for that. Another option is the Fire TV Stick, and its base model comes at $39.99. That uh, comes with a remote and the Fire Stick that you just plug into your HDMI in the back of the TV. And if you are an Amazon Prime customer, you'll definitely want to check it out because then you can stream all your Prime videos. You can rent from Amazon or buy from Amazon. Uh, they have all the apps that would be available on the Amazon uh app store and if there's three different models and if you spend $99 you can get the Amazon Fire TV with the TV stick uh, voice remote with the TV stick and the voice remote and the voice remote will allow you to search for videos play videos things like that and then the other option is the $139.99 gaming edition which comes with a controller so if you wanted to play games from the Amazon app store that would be your, your best bet and then finally, for the do-it-yourselfer who has a lot of their own movies and things like that saved to hard drive at home, OSMC is an open source media center built for the people by the people, which basically means if you want to play, use it on a PC, Mac, Linux, uh, or as I would suggest, a Raspberry Pi, you can do that. For $35, if you get a Raspberry Pi 2, you can use this media center on it. Um, it works. It has its own app store. You can stream all your videos and music to it. It's a really flexible media center when it comes to different file formats and things like that. And it's a great option for the do-it-yourselfer who wants a project for the Raspberry Pi. Speaking of getting hooked. I am hooked on this next sponsor. Uh, people know this if you've watched Know How, which is I love sponsors that I used before they became sponsors of Twit. I have right. a, there's a special place in my heart because I know, hey, I, I get to stand behind a product I paid my money for. You're right. And I think uh, having the holiday season come and go, we realize how important it is to keep an eye on packages that come to your yeah, house. Yeah, you know, that every, this is always so sad. Every year there's always that story of the couple that gets caught or the police department that's upset with that shady truck that kind of follows the FedEx or the UPS truck, waits until they drop off a package and roll away, and then they grab it. Right. So it's on your door for like 45 seconds, and then someone steals it. Right. Uh, yeah, not cool. Well, folks, don't <laughs> ever, ever have to put up with that again. Or at least if it happens to you, know that you can get sweet, sweet justice because you've caught them on video with this. This is the Ring Video Doorbell. And just like the name may indicate, it is a doorbell. You push the button, and it will tell you that there's someone outside. But inside this kit, it's so much more. Not only are they going to give you a complete self-install kit that includes the drill bit, that includes the, the, uh, the, the level so you can make sure that it goes on properly, but it's also going to include this little plate here. The plate takes the two wires from your current doorbell, takes that low voltage DC, and makes it so that the ring can charge off of it, making sure that you never, ever, ever have to worry about charging it. But if you do, if you're installing this in a place without wires or without power, you just use this. It's a micro USB cable, standard cable, charge it up, and it's good for a year. Now, what will the Ring do for a year? Well, it's got a high definition camera plus a microphone and a speaker, which means when someone rings the doorbell, it will start a conversation with your phone or your tablet and allow you to have a video conference with someone who may walk up to your door. It's also got a motion sensor, which means if someone, oh, I don't know, drops off a package and then someone else comes and grabs it, it will have recorded that video and it will be uploaded to the web. They can't just steal the Ring Video doorbell and, and get rid of the evidence. Oh, here's how it actually works. I have this installed in Las Vegas. I 
I'm worried about my parents. Right. They've actually had this happen in the neighborhood. Right. You, the house next to them? And yeah, oh, and across, on the other right side? Across, and across the street. Yeah. Right. This happened. Yeah. Uh, they saw a UPS truck stop, and then it went away. And that set off the motion, the motion detection. Right. And then, like, as soon as the, the USB, uh, UPS truck went around the corner, a little pickup truck was stopped. A woman got out, grabbed the box, and ran back to her car. Uh, now, because she was running back to her car, the camera actually caught her face. Right, and in we, the car she was probably and driving. There we go. But see, this is how it looks. This is telling me all the different times that the Ring video doorbell uh, detected motion or, or got a call uh, from someone in the, in the house. Uh, that is actually, that's a feed from our house in Las Vegas. Oh, the, oh so who, wait, who is that? So someone rang our doorbell... Um, oh, that's that's one of my aunts. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what she looks kind of suspicious. Okay. She though. does. Well, most of my family looks pretty suspicious. That's true. But yeah. if you wanted, you could say, "Hey, Auntie." Uh, yeah. Say, hey, there's nobody home. Nobody here. You can go home. I, go I, back. I do have to say, uh, my parents have freaked out a lot of friends <laughs> because they answer the door and then say, "Oh, no, no, we're in Hawaii." Yeah. yeah. Sorry, wait. We're on a cruise what? right now, wasn't it? Your uh, neighbor was stealing electricity <laughs> stealing while your parents yeah. were on a cruise. Yeah. Yeah. It was during the summer. And power is expensive during the summer in Las Vegas, so he thought he would power his like, his wall air conditioner <laughs> off our... Yeah. Duh. Folks, ring, get it. Now you can put your mind at ease and protect your home with the video doorbell that Time Magazine and both USA Today named as one of their top 10 of 2015. Just go to ring.com slash know-how. That's ring.com slash know-how for free expedited FedEx shipping. Treat yourself in this new year to a ring.com doorbell the ring video doorbell again that's ring.com slash know how with ring you're always home and we thank the ring video doorbell for its support of know how thanks ring you know what there is no better way to open up the new year than with mm -hmm. some feedback oh i thought you were yeah. gonna say fireworks fire oh fireworks too we can and, do that and later we're gonna try to do this we're gonna we're gonna oh, there's obviously gonna be weeks where we don't have enough feedback to, to justify dedicating a segment to it but we're gonna try to make every Monday have some feedback from you because that's been one of the things that we've loved getting from the audience. That from interaction. Our, that interaction from the Google Plus group. Again, go to Google Plus and look for Know How. Mm -hmm. If you have a question, if you have a project, if you have something that you want built, that's the place to post it. And uh, if it strikes us, we'll put it in the show. We'll answer your questions. Yeah. We hey. might even show off your project. How about that? Considering we've been outdone a few times. A few to more, more than a few times. Mm. Uh, what, what do we got first, Brian? Uh, so this one f comes from James Hughes, and his question is, I had some issues printing with uh, transparent filament in my DaVinci this weekend. It extruded fine, but the first layers didn't wa want to stick to the bed. I was able to get it to stick using blue painter's tape. What can I use to get the first layers to stick? I don't want to use the slurry. Maybe Aquanet? This is a question that most 3D printers will have. Anytime mm -hmm. you're using a 3D printing device, getting those first layers to stick to the bed, but at the same time also being able to release when you're done printing right. has, has always been an issue. So what you've recommended like glue sticks in the past? I have, I have glue sticks, pads. I've used a little bit of slurry, I've you know printer's tape as well. But there is one solution that seems to work for absolutely everyone. Luckily mm -hmm. I answered this question on the new screensavers not too long ago. Uh, and I thought, hey, you know what? Better than listening to me, why didn't you go ahead and listen to me? I'm Father Robert Ballas here, the digital Jesuit, here with a tip for all the makers. Now, if you've dabbled with 3D printing, you probably know about bacon. No, I'm not talking about the delicious meat candy. I mean the nasty tendency, especially for larger prints, to curl off of the surface. The reason why that happens is as the material leaves the extruder, it's very hot. As it touches the surface, it cools, and as it cools, it contracts and pulls itself if there's not enough adhesion to your printing surface. Now, there are a couple of ways to combat the bacon. The first is tape, regular old tape, painter's tape, scotch tape, something that's clean and yet has enough adhesive force, enough roughness to keep the print from curling up. Unfortunately, though a lot of these printers come with tape packs, I'm not the biggest fan of tape. It's wasteful and it just never really worked that well for me. What has worked is this a glue stick a glue stick that you might find inside of a grammar school classroom that's right it's it's the old-fashioned bit of adhesive that i can smear onto my glass surface a thin layer of this means that your print is more likely to stick now as an added bonus it means that when it comes time to remove your print from your printing surface you can just soak this in water and after a few minutes the glue will have softened enough for you to scrape it right off now if you want to get super pro you need to use hairspray 
No, I'm, I'm not kidding. Really, Hairspray. Now, this is not the brand I normally like to use. I like to use Aquanet Super Hold. Nothing with scent, nothing with all that extra gunk that might jam up my print head, but enough to give you a nice clean coat onto your glass surface so that the bacon will forever be expelled. Now, if you want more of these tips, be sure to watch my show with Brian Burnett Know How every Thursday on the Twit TV network. You know, when he taped it, we were only on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, that was guy gonna, was wrong. Don't thank listen goodness to that guy. we're watching this show now, <laughs> otherwise we might be confused. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, Aquanet is probably, because I, I tried other hairsprays and they kind of work. Uh -huh. There's something about the formulation of Aquanet that is that perfect combination Right. of stickiness but also can release <laughs> uh, i tried it i tried it with uh like salon selective or something right and it stuck really well the problem is i couldn't get it to release oh yeah that's like i had right. to boil the thing for it to come off that's you don't want to do that no that sounds like a hassle but then how did it did it work well for your hair oh i mean well, uh, duh, duh. Uh, no oh <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the other thing uh aquanet actually doesn't really work on your hair so oh, okay. and also it's <laughs> If you ever find like a drugstore out in the middle of nowhere that has Aquanet, buy as many bottles as they have. It it's hard to get. If you order it online, it's actually kind of expensive. It's like $30 a bottle. So, Jeez. Yeah, that's so. more than like filament. I know. Exactly. It's like, and it should be $4 a bottle. <laughs> Go figure. Well, see, I've never run into that problem because you've never let me play with the 3D printers yet. All right, moving on to the next yeah, question. Thanks. Yeah, All right, what do we got? All right, this next one comes from Eddie Foy, and his question is, anyone have an angle on the very thin panel light? Thin as a one millimeter, ideally, but up to three millimeters is doable. Something in between 200 millimeters and five millimeter? Oh, Eddie, you know, that's a, it's a really good question. You, you just happen to have something. I, I here, just huh? happen to have some stuff that I, I wanted to mess with. These are electroluminescent panels. Ooh. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's definitely gonna meet your uh, your thinness criteria. In fact, can you go to the overhead here? That's that's how thin these are. It, it's super thin. It's super thin, super, Paper thin. super flexible. Uh, and now, what I like about this is it, it uses this. This is a, a little inverter. You wanna mm -hmm. go ahead and drop the lights a little bit. They're not the brightest things on the planet, <coughs> but this is just uh, three volts. It's two uh, AA batteries. Go mm -hmm. ahead and connect that one. I'm gonna connect this one. Sure. If, uh, I'm if I, red team. There we go. I'm, I'm a blue team. So you push the button, and <sighs> boom. Ah, oh, this is like what delicious you looking what you American got? Oh, cheese. You got, we got so much, so many lights, Brian. There's so many lights. That's cool. Well, go back to overhead. They there there we go. That's better. Wait, we, we need the blinky blink. How do you yeah. get the blink? Yeah, just press the button again. Yeah, Rick and Morty, 100 years, Rick and Morty. Oh, my God. Oh, and we just gave someone an epileptic seizure. Sweet. <laughs> what if I do this? Does it look cool? Uh, no, no. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, bring the lights back up. So these are electroluminescent panels. What I like about these is you can cut them. So while they, they're on. No, no don't cut them turn, while they're on. That's off. bad. Yeah, in fact, unplug them before you, <laughs> you cut them. <laughs> yeah. uh, because it's, it's converting to AC. It's Ooh. got alternated current going in here in order right. to, to make that work properly. But as long as you keep the contact points at the bottom, you can cut through electroluminescent panels and make them exactly the size that you want. That's uh, awesome. There, there will be a little bit of, of wiring to go to uh -huh. make sure that it works properly, but uh, it is one of the most flexible lighting solutions I know of. It's not the brightest thing. As you no. can tell, like one, when we're in regular studio, studio lighting, let's see if you can tell. Let's get this out of the glare. So yeah, a little bit, right? You, you can, can kind of tell. tell. You, you can, can tell, tell, but I mean, it's not like illuminating a spot. No, you're not gonna light up something, but uh, when it's pitch black like this, you can see it pretty well. Especially when it starts flashing. <laughs> They're not that expensive. I actually got these off of eBay. Just look for electroluminescent panels, and depending on the size you want and the quality, that's gonna up up the uh, the the ante. I would love to have like little cutouts of these yeah. on my motorcycle at night right? and stuff, like little stripes up along the yeah, side. Yeah, you can get strips of this. So these are squares, but you can buy long strips if, nice. if that's the size you want. I think I bought like these four cost me a, a grand total of about twenty bucks, uh, okay. but that included this, which I really don't need. I'm actually going to make my own because I want to build it into, you know, one of our enclosures. Right. Uh, but if you are looking for a super thin light, uh, Eddie Foy, this, yeah. this is probably what you're going to want to do. It runs on a couple of AA batteries in this little controller. Right, right. I wonder how long is the battery life for? I uh, haven't tested that yet, but... Um, probably pretty good. Though. It's probably decent. I mean, these <laughs> pull up not that not much. much power at all. I, I think it's more than uh, an equivalent LED. 
Okay. Uh, but not a whole lot more. I mean, the the biggest power draw is actually going to be the uh, the inverter. Uh, okay. Converting DC into AC, you are going to get a little bit of power loss. So yeah, that's that's an issue. Nice. So here you go, electroluminescent. That's uh, that's our suggestion in the new year for I some like thin, it. thin power. I like it. Anything that's shiny and blinks. Yeah, we like shiny. What else we got, Brian? All right, this next one comes from Brian. I think you scrolled past. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, oh, so I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> I'm like, there we go. Thank you. This one comes from Ryan Damask, and he asks, hey guys, I have a 450 running a 4S battery. The gimbal says recommended input voltage to be 12 volts. So can I run a 4S on a recommended 3S gimbal, or what is the best way to drop the voltage without adding another battery? Okay, so there's an easy answer to this, and then there's the answer I want to give. The easy answer is that gimbal is probably going to be able to run on a 4S battery. Okay. More likely than not, it, it's, it can handle the voltage. So Most not a problem. of them are. Not a problem. On the off case, however, that you have a gimbal that's incredibly voltage sensitive, uh, and you, actually there are a couple of gimbals out there that will only run at 7.4 volts. So I want to give you a really, really easy solution. And it's this. You've seen these before. This is the 99 cents I can voltage regulator. Barely see it, it. Can you see it in the overhead, Alex? Probably, probably not. Do you have the side? Oh wait, wait, wait. there we go. Boom. <laughs> that little guy. That's a little teeny. The thing weighs a gram. Okay, it's so it's so not going to add a whole lot of power. But what this will do is it will allow me to take any voltage between I think what is it one volt and 17 volts or 19 Something volts. I'll have to look like at it again. That. And and convert it down into any voltage I need. If you look here, Alex. This, this, that's a potentiometer, and so I use a micro screwdriver to turn that, and that will lower the voltage going out. Right. Uh, and as long as the, low, the voltage going out is lower than the voltage coming in, it, it will do it just fine. Uh, if I was going to be using this for, say, an FPV setup, I mm -hmm. would also want to put a line filter on it, because I want to clean the power before it gets to the transmitter, because right. I don't want that static being added in. But if it's going to be going to a gimbal, you don't, you don't need... Not worried about yeah, that. As long as you give it the proper voltage, it will work just fine. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, I, I typically I use things like this. These are little JST connectors. Uh, we, uh, do the side view. There we go. Little JST connectors so that I can make it modular. Mm -hmm. But these are so, so cheap. I have like 40 of them in my kit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll just wire it in line. Yeah. It, it's, it's almost not worth the desolder in case I even need to change my project. Just throw it away. Oh, well, yeah. These are, uh, how much are they each? 99 cents. Yeah. But seriously, there, uh, uh, there's no reason for you not to just fill up. Just get a bunch, because you will always need to change voltages. Yeah, this those, is a great way to do it. Those are handy. They're, they're handy. And they will give 3 amp of current, which is, is plenty. That's going to power most everything on your quadcopter, except for your motors. Cool. Yeah. And this is also a really good way. By the way, if you, if you start doing FPV, like we're starting to do FPV, right. you're going to want to be using opto ESCs, because you don't want the interference from the motor making it into the flight controller slash the FPV setup. Right. Which means you're going to need a battery eliminator circuit. That's what this is for. This okay. is a perfect way to supply power to both your flight controller and your receiver without having to add a, a big old circuit. Cool. Yeah. Well, I think that answers the question. I think so. You know, the, and the, a couple others. The first, uh, the first uh, BEC I ever used yeah. weighed like six grams. <laughs> and and that didn't seem like a lot, but now that we're starting to get into performance craft, it's like yeah. six grams, that, that's a lot of waste. When, when was this that you used it? Uh, the first, first time I built an FPV craft. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, the first like, time. Nope, don't want that. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, I like this guy. Let's do one more. All right, last one. This one comes from Michael Hines, and he asks, so a question for everyone. What's your favorite LiPo brand? Are you still using Turn Turnigy, Luminere, or something else? This is, we could be getting into a religious war with this. There are some people <laughs> who, their brand is their brand, and right. they stay with it. I am still at that point where if I am just bombing around, yeah. pretty much any battery will do. Okay. Right? If I'm racing, or if I need super high performance, I will go for, the, the C value is more important to me. That's the discharge. For example, mm -hmm. these are all what? Uh, so this is a 3S. So it's running at 11.1 volts. This is a Turnigy 1,000 milliamp. So one amp hour of power inside this thing, uh, which comes out to almost 12 watts of power. Mm -hmm. uh, this has a C rating of 25 to 35 C. So it, it, it can deliver, what, something like 55 watts of power, right. uh, basically. This is a 4S battery. This, uh, this is a 2,200 milliamp hour. This does 60 C. And I think it will do like a 100C boost, uh, which means not continuous, but it, you know, if you just need it right away. Right. Uh, 
That's more important to me than brand. Now, I will say some brands, the, the, the one thing that, that stops me from buying a brand uh -huh. is if a brand is known for, for way over-exaggerating its numbers. Right. Uh, and, and both Zippy and Turnergy, they're, they're decent. Mm -hmm. You're obviously not going to get exactly what they put on the label, mm -hmm. but I always account for like 20% of a lie. Okay. Uh, and if, if I can live with that 20% margin, that battery's okay with me. Now, there, are, there have been a couple of cases when I, I like, did an FPV race about yeah. a month ago, and I wanted every bit of power I can get out of a particular amount of weight. Mm -hmm. And that's, I did buy like a, a higher name brand, but it, but it was crazy expensive. It was like three times more than a regular battery at that, at that rating. But you were basically guaranteeing that you right. were gonna get exactly what you wanted. Yeah. Is there a brand that you can think of that you just wouldn't touch? Um, every brand has like some of the, like the bad ones. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, oh gosh, I can't. I can't remember the name. I'll, I'll have Is to there one with like a fake name, like we were talking yeah, about with I'll the Raspberry Pi? Yeah, I'll find it. I'll find it. And uh, what, like I did some tests on this brand, and it was like one tenth. They were delivering one tenth the amount of power, and it still puffed up. So, jeez. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, one of the best ways to tell with batteries is to just look through the communities. Yeah. The communities will tell you, oh, don't ever buy a Zippy, blah 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 blah, mm -hmm. because it's a horrible battery. It doesn't deliver what they what they say. Or do buy yourself a bunch of multi-star Turnergies because they do this. Right. So, yeah. Okay. There you go. So that does it for our feedback. Uh, hey, Brian. Yeah. This is pretty much the format we're going to be doing for the new show. Keeping it quick. Keeping it quick. Keeping, keeping it, it tight. Know, tight. Yeah. Uh, we want to try to get these down to 45 minutes. Obviously, this one was running a tiny bit long. Yeah, but we're, we're still getting used to we're it. We're getting used to it. We're going to get it down there. That's why we were playing around with the format all during the last half of last year. We wanted to see what worked, what didn't work. What you are gonna see are more themed shows. Mm -hmm. So when we wanna do a show on, say, Arduino, there's gonna be the big Arduino project, and then there's gonna be a lot of support stories around the Arduino project. Right, we're um, gonna maintain focus around one thing. Right, but again, the key here is please, please, please share. Yeah. Tell your friend, put it out on Twitter, put it on the Facebook. We wanna grow know-how. I personally would love to do three shows a week, or even four shows a week. Uh, you know, if they'll let us. Right. Remember, yeah. Coding 101 ended last year. We we ended the run, but one of the things that we promised was we're going to be bringing that back. Some of the coding projects will end up in know-how. Some of the before you buy reviews are going to end up in know-how. So the more you share, the more we get to bring that back. And that's uh, that's good for everyone. And knowing is half the battle. That means that we oh. Where's my hat? No. Oh, here it is. I was going to say, it means we get more hats. Actually, I think we that's mine. We might even be able to get a hat for oh, Alex. Yeah, you've got the oh. medium. I've got a big head. Right. Yeah, let's get this back on. All right. Wait, which way? More hats. More hats. Uh, now, before we leave, we do have a parting shot, um, uh, aside from Alex wearing a, a turkey hat. Uh, I, <laughs> we'll I, get to that. We did want to show <laughs> off some of our audience members who took one of our projects to heart. We showed off Multiple man Monitor Madness a while back. Yeah. And people really fun. liked it. Uh, I want to show you pictures from two of our users. The first one is from 610 Bob. If you go ahead and just scroll through <laughs> some of his... Okay, first of all, 610, Jeez, I love your workstation because it makes me feel better about mine. <laughs> <laughs> mine is a mess. Yours is messier. You win. You win. Uh, he's made, like, custom brackets to hold TVs in place. Oh, I like this. Okay, this is yeah. good stuff. Yeah, right? Oh, it's uh, rustic. You know what? The, the best cure for messy is... It works. If it works, yeah. I'm very happy. I like. He's even got some cable management oh, back there. That's of course the Velcro. Look, Velcro. So right. that's you know. Cable I've seen management. worse. I've, I've seen, seen worse. worse. So, you know, we when we first moved in here, we had the TriCaster, all the cables right. and stuff set up. <laughs> Every Alex kept saying they were going to organize those. It never happened. No, no, it's just like spaghetti down there. But you know, once it works, it works. One yeah. more. We've got Carl Elton. Uh, I think this is the first time we've ever shown anything from him. Uh, a, he has a much neater setup here. Uh, I, so I'm ooh. thinking I'm thinking he's probably married. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. This all I the Star Trek or yeah. Star Trek stuff is. I do like I do like the Star Trek. So wait, what do we have there? So we've got a shuttlecraft. Uh, is that an Akira? Can that you might identify those? Yeah, can you can you can you zoom those in? I don't think they're real. Oh, they're not real. Unlike the other Star Trek stuff. Are you sure that's not so that? Kind of looks like an Akira class. What's a it's a fictional class of starship? Yeah. Aren't they all fictional classes? Of no, starship? this is real, <laughs> Brian. Yeah, uh, he's got another one, right? Yeah. What's the? Oh, it's it's just the same. That thing. is very tidy. Yeah, it is a that's. That's almost OCD tidy. A little bit. Yeah. That's that's like what my that, that's what my prayer desk looks like. My <laughs> office desk. Mm, no, 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 not at all. 
Folks, that's all the time we have for this episode of Know How. We want to thank you for joining us in this new year, and we want to thank you for being part of, um, you know, of making Know How big enough to split into two episodes. Yeah, we, we, I'm looking forward to the rest of the year. Yeah, we couldn't have done it without you, and uh, we will do our best to give you the best content we can give you week after week after week. Now, don't forget, you can find all of our shows on our show page, including our show notes, links to everything we talked about. Mm -hmm. Where, Ryan? That would be twit.tv slash kh, and uh, not only will our show notes be there, but we'll also have uh, handy links for subscribing and sharing and all that good stuff. Click, 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 share. Please share, please share. Also, you can find us in our Google Plus group. Just go to Google Plus, look for Know How. Join, be part of the 9,500 people who are part of our Know It Alls. They're the ones who give us projects that they want to see, who show us the projects that we've created so we can show them off here on, the, on our episodes. Right. And also the ones who both ask and answer questions from the people who might be new to the maker DIY space. Yes, and if uh, you should just be careful. If you go on there, you're probably going to spend some time thumbing through all the different yes. articles and things people are posting. It's a pretty vibrant community. Yes, it is. Uh, don't forget that you can also find us on the Twitters. You'll find me at twitter.com slash PadreSJ. And I am at cranky underscore hippo. And you'll find our TD Alex Gumpel at, uh, at turkeyhead, T-U-R-K-E-Y-H-E-A-D. <laughs> He makes it work, though. I, uh, it's too bad he didn't get one of these hats, but the turkey <laughs> looks great on there. You can follow bad. him at ANLEF3. I really I feel bad for him. But not that bad. I'm going to give him my hat. Until next time, I'm Father Robert Ballas here. And I'm Brian Burnett. And now that you know how, go get a hat. Get rid of a turkey hat. <laughs> <laughs>